time for us today. Okay. So, oh, let me, let me spotlight myself or maybe I have Sarah in the producer's booth. So she's going to try to answer any questions that you guys have. You know the drill. Just uh, type them into the chat box and let's see. There we go. Hello. <laughs> okay. Um, so we are... Oh, I, you guys got the instructions. I'm glad I tried my hardest to get them out to you. So I hope you can kind of craft along with me a little bit and try some stuff out for yourself. Um, okay, so we're talking about airless misters and um, they have kind of like the airless bottle prevents any air bubbles or blockages in your nozzle. So you should have like a nice even spray on everything. Um, and you can get a fine, let me switch over to the overhead view and show you how you can get a kind of finer mist. What color is this? Mm, I don't want to use that one. It's night reflection. It's not, it doesn't really have a wow factor. Um, why don't we use, we'll use Poppy Parade. So I can show you if we spritz really hard. This might be my first time using it. So let me give it a test. Okay, yeah. So if we spritz really hard, we get that fine mist and then if you spritz kind of slower you can get it to like you know be a little bit thicker on there so I really like the kind of different variations that you can get just from the one bottle it's really nice um now just be careful you've got your nozzle pointing in the right direction don't shoot yourself in the eye with it but other than that they're super simple to use um they wipe up it's it's good to have some um baby wipes or like a rag on hand because you know the, the spray it's a spray whatever um it can get all over the place always have a craft mat down when you're using it and we also I, I know we are um out of stock right now but Dennis did tell me that we should be getting some back in the um the spray protectors maybe Sarah can throw the link up in there and that'll it's kind of like a protective shield that you can do your project in so that it kind of contains the spray a little bit they're super handy to have as well so we have 12 different colors in the airless misters um, the regular ones so here we've got green galore uh, cherry pop is a nice one I hope the colors show up okay maybe that might help a bit. Um, cherry pop. There's a couple different blues. Bermuda Bay is a nice one. Pacific Point. And then um, this one's my Maya Blue, Mine Blue. So just the variation between those is really nice. Um, and then we've got, there's our Poppy Parade one that I just sprayed. The Blackberry Bliss is a nice purple. Hot Fiesta, an orange one. Amber Lights is really nice. There's the night reflection. That's I didn't want to do the sample with that. <laughs> but it's a nice dark color. You can get some really nice combinations, mixing and matching the different colors. And then here's Meadow Moss is a nice one as well. So that's the, um, the regular Airless Misters. And I think I saw Sarah just posted the link um, for the pearl airless misters as well so they've got um i'll show you the thing there's 12 colors of these as well they've got um mica in them so they're going to show up differently on white versus a black paper and i did have some samples um so here we've got there's a few pearls there's pearl whisper which is a nice one you can see the mica there so there it is white doesn't show up as much in person you can see a nice subtle shimmer uh, but on the dark color, you can really, you know, see the mica. And then we've got shimmering gold on the black and white. I don't, I hope the camera picks it up. You can see the gold on the white. Uh, it's again, very subtle, kind of another pearl finish, pearlescent. Now we've got our rose pearl. I can see the flex of the rose on the white. Um, again, probably not on camera, and I hope, that, there it is, you can see it on the black, a nice pearl, rose kind of, rose gold color. Now here's our icy pink on the black, and then you see the pink on the white there. And we've got silver moon dust, subtle on the black, and then you can see the silver for sure 
on the white there. There you go. Then we've got a gold rush is a nice one on the black. That one's a little more sparse on my sample, but <laughs> you get the idea. The white, that grab it, there you go. And then we've got golden sage, which I really like. It's a very subtle greeny gold color. And then you can see kind of the like olive tone, sage tone, I suppose, <laughs> golden sage on the white. And then we've got uh, a nice copper blaze there on the black and the white shows up pretty well too. So there's your color swatches. Now let me collect all those, get them out of the way. And I think we'll start off by doing a little stencil action. So I'm gonna show off one of the new, um, let's get that out of the way. One of the new um, Sue Wilson stencils, the Tropical Leaves, that's CEST042. If you are interested, I really like this one. So I'm of course gonna use the uh, Golden Sage for that guy. And the, we'll just toss it on some white cardstock. And I think I will go with the Bermuda Bay is a kind of turquoisey. That's our turquoisey Bermuda, Bermuda Bay. And then we'll do a nice, gotta do the green galore. Okay, so we'll see what kind of background we can get. So I've just set it on my cardstock. I'll actually probably. Just keep my rule, my magnetic ruler on there. I've got my magnetic Nelly's Choice mat underneath just to keep it pinned. And let's just mist it. Let's mist it. I'm gonna go with my blue first, my kind of turquoise Bermuda Bay on there. And if you remember the technique that we shared with the pixie powders, we can also do, oh, well, I wanna do my pearlescent one last. Here's my green galore. Kind of go thicker on that. Um, if you remember, what was I saying? Remember the demo that we did with the pixie powders with the stencil? We're gonna use, do a double use from this. So this is just adding that little gold shimmer. Of course you can dry with a heat tool in between each of these if you wanted, uh, but your stencil might go flying. So there we go, we've got our one stencil. Then just like our pixie powders, I'm gonna scoop that up as easily as I can. There's one background, oh, that looks so cool. And then I'm just gonna smush it onto my cardstock. Oh, I like it. Cool, so you get a couple different backgrounds you know, from one kind of go at it. Let's, I think we can even do another one. See how far we can stretch it. Of course, you could add, um, you could spritz it with water and it would lighten those colors up. Kind of rehydrate. Nah, three didn't quite make it, but still, very cool. So this was kind of, uh, I just did a slimline dye on that. Oh, that was the background that we did up, you know, one that I did. Uh, and you can get it nice and light. I like it. You just add more water and you can get different effects. Um, so I've got a lovely pink ink stamp. This is one of their newer ones. Um, what was the name? That's the Flourishing Fox Glove from the Flora series. Anyways, so we will grab, I'm gonna go with our Blackberry Bliss and I'm gonna spritz it right onto my craft mat. And I just have my stamp mounted onto my stamping buddy and I'm going to pick up my uh, Airless Mister ink. And this is gonna give us a really cool kind of subtle look is the idea anyways. <laughs> Okay, so now I've got it inked up and I'm going to make sure that's laying flat. And we will 
stamp down. Now it's not going to be a precise, you know, fine detailed looking stamp, but you can get some cool effects with it. Make sure I got all my spots on there. There we go. So kind of like grungy looking subtle stamped images. Of course, you can get it a little better than what I just did when you're not in a rush. Um, but I will show you a cute sample that I made up with, um, with that same idea. So I did that same stamp, the little sentiment from that pink ink, flourishing foxglove, added some green galore on to the bottom and just added some accent colors. So hmm, let's, let's find my, where did I throw my green galore now? So just to add that color in, we spritz there, add some nice, uh, the icy pink up top and it kind of brings it to life. So another thing that I really like about these airless misters is they really layer well, like the colors layer well. It's not gonna, like I stamped with that and it's the, you can see the pink over top. I mean, I should have dried it in between, but it's not really blurring over top. Like the colors aren't blurring together. The, the dye sinks in really well and doesn't blur together. Unlike the, say if we were using the pixie powders to do that kind of effect, they would all melt together the second you add more water or whatever, they're just going to blur. Um, so I like that aspect of the pixie powders. Um, oh, you want to see Pam, you want to see kind of what it looks like. Um, here, let's open it up. I hope it doesn't go everywhere. <laughs> but I'll show you the spout. So it just kind of suctions the, um, the, Air, the air, the product is sections it up. So it sucks all the air out and it kind of like collapses underneath. So there's no air bubbles or anything. So that's so that they don't clog. I hope you can tell what I'm showing you there. That's how it, how it works. So yeah, um, now Another effect that I was playing around with, I got very inspired with these airless misters. Um, let's see if I've got a clean craft mat here. Okay, so I wanted to show you um, the, a little kind of, I'm calling it an ink blot technique. I haven't seen anyone else do it. That doesn't mean no one else has done it, but I didn't see it anyways. Um, so I'm going to grab my, uh, I was inspired by the Just Lou, the new Just Lou collection from Studio Light. So I've got some Hot Fiesta, um, some Amber Lights, and this is Gold Rush, the Pearlescent Gold Rush. So let's see. Oh, um, okay, so worrying about shaking it. Thanks, Sue, for a good question. Uh, you don't have to shake it um, for the regular the regular pigments, but the pearlescent ones, you do want to give it a shake, and it doesn't take much, and you'll start to see the mica swirling around in the uh, bottle pretty quickly. So that, I hope that answers your question. Now, okay, so I've got my kind of orangey colors inspired by the Just Lou set. And I'm going to grab my vellum sheet of, I'm using the foundations card vellum from Creative Expressions. And I'm just going to fold it in half. And we're going to do kind of like an ink blot butterfly. We can do a personality test, a little Rorschach <laughs> test. Um, okay, so I've got it folded in half. Now make sure you have your air gun hand, or your heat tool, not air gun, your heat tool handy. <laughs> um, handy for this one because we kind of want to dry it up quick. So I'm going to go, I'm going to spritz in with my hot fiesta. You wanted to do a little monarch butterfly effect. So I'm just going to spritz it on there, fold it over. Whoops, try and line it up. And 
get that. And it actually always ends up, for me, it always ends up looking kind of like a wing. I really like it. Okay. And then we've got our kind of double look. So just dry it up quick with your heat tool. So we can stamp, I'm gonna stamp the, uh, the butterfly stamp. This is stamp JL14 from the collection. That's what I'm gonna stamp over top when we get it all colored up. Uh, but they have a moth in that collection as well, and that could be very cute with some of these colors. Or, you know, any butterfly, really. Stamp or die cut. Um, I'll show you on this card, I used the Just, for, Just Lou, um, one of the butterfly dies for that one, this guy. That's the stencil JL18 uh, and die cut the wings to add a little 3D element to that. Okay, using the same vellum kind of ink blot shot at it. So now I'm gonna go in with my amber lights and the paper does start to curl up, but you know, do your best. It's not science. Add in my amber lights, fold it over, smear it around. Very cool. Dry it up again. And then I like to add my mica last. I think, I mean, I don't know, but I feel like it lets it like sit on top of the other colors more. go in with our gold rush just to add some accents on there and whoops oh fold it back up give it a smoosh there so I hope you can see the glittery gold kind of it turns into like um veins almost in what's going to be the wings so i'm i really like it and every time i do it it's different even just the full page looks like a butterfly so there you have it so we cut that up i better give it a wipe I've got my, um, cool, cool. I've got my card base here. Is that a wipe? Not too bad. Okay, I've got my card, card base five and a half by five and a half. I'm just going to layer, um, uh, black cardstock over top with a little bit of foam tape. Um, the, the black cardstock is cut to um, five and one eighth by five and one eighth, just to give us a little bit of a frame. I was kind of going for, um, you know, the like display boxes of butterflies, you know, when they pin them up kind of thing. That's what I was going for. Um, so then I've trimmed, here's a dry one, and trim that to five by five. And then I want to mount it on some white card. Because it just really helps to pop the vellum. So I'm just putting my center fold because I want to make sure I get it centered. My center fold at two and a half inches and trimming off either side. Make sure we get that center vein going down the middle of our butterfly. Flip it around two and a half inches. There we go. 
Now, you can see it's the same print. You can really see the gold on that print. Uh, it's the same print on either side. So I'm gonna clamp that down, mount my butterfly, and I'm going to stamp it with memento ink because we're doing it on vellum. I don't want things smearing off on me. So center my butterfly. I'm gonna center, but slightly to the top because I'm gonna put a sentiment along the bottom. There we go. Apply my memento ink. This is tuxedo black. That on there. There we go. Look at that. So pretty. Uh, so you should give that another shot with your heat tool if you're crafting along. Um, and then we can toss on our oh, so I would then mount that onto the white cardstock. Um, here's one I did in blue mounted on the white, and you can see the color just pops. So here's the finished card with the orange added on a little sentiment. Um, I used the some of the new uh, woodware sentiments that's FRS 851 birthday strips, it has a bunch of cute you know, regular sayings, versatile sayings. So that's the finished card. You can see the white cardstock in behind, mounted in behind. I just do it with uh, a little bit of double-sided tape. Um, really makes it pop. If we were to just mount it onto our, mount it onto our black, it's not, not as eye-catching. So there you have it. Again, same butterfly vellum technique uh, and then cut with the little die cut. Lots of fun. Um, I hope you try it out. Try out, play with your airless misters. And um, yeah, I, ho I hope you get a chance to play with them. And I think that just about does it for today. Uh, next week is going to be sparkle shakers. So I will, again, try and get that prep list and materials and stuff out to you fairly quickly so that you can craft along with us. Um, yeah, thanks so much for joining me. I hope you guys have a great afternoon and get a chance to play with those airless misters. We will see you again next week, same time, same place. Bye, everybody. Thanks.